Eccoci. Hi everybody. I'm waiting to connect. Yes. Hi everybody. We are at the M9 Museum. Siamo al Museo M9. And I'm waiting our friends here. Hi, hey, 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 Luca. Ciao. 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 So let's try to see if you know. think the, the best way is this one. Hey, perfect. Can Hold you hear me? Just make this a little bit louder. Well, so I can hear you. Me too, me too. I have the same problem. Let me check the, the nice exhibition you're in. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Fantastico. Ciao. So, do you know this place? <laughs> yeah, it's a really nice. looks very nice, actually. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> so we have this uh, direct uh, in a, uh, at, uh, at, your, at, at your muse in your museum at your exhibition. Nice, it's great. So th thank, th th thank you for for your time and being with us. Uh, well, uh, my you, pleasure. You see me here, yeah, my, yeah. You see me, and that uh, you can see the exhibition there. So yes. also also our friends can can see the can see the exhibition. Fantastic. And it's uh, it's 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 nice to miss the, to make this uh, direct. Uh, conversation directly in your place, and, uh, and and I like it. It's uh, one of the events we are doing using the, your exhibition place uh, and your exhibition to talk about your work. So well, I'm, I'm very I'm very happy and very glad we, we can meet each other again. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, well, it's uh, as you know our conversation is. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can hear okay. you. Yes, yes. Super, super. So, uh, as you know, our conversation, which is supported by Rubner, uh, is about the DL project. And uh, the DL project is related to the, not only to the Construction Act, but also to the exhibition we did together. So, I would like to start uh, from um, this show, and, uh, and, and uh, we will explain how we did it. And yes. then from this show, we will move to the building, and then from the building, we move to, 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 to your design approach. Great. So from, okay. from, the, from the small to the biggest. <laughs> Sounds like a plan, okay. <laughs> so, well, um, first of all, for the, for the people who, are, who, have been, who haven't been yet uh, to, the, to this show, I will I move, I will move for a, a while so they can have a look to this uh, fantastic view. But then I will cover it, so you, you must uh, come to visit it. We are at, actually at M9 Museum, uh, which is the place uh, which has been built by Sir Buchan Hatton office in the last uh, 10 years and uh, we are inside the exhibition which is a temporary exhibition devoted to uh, to, to your work to the work of your office in the last 30 years low draw and built is a, it's a beautiful title of the exhibition and um, and uh, well it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's the exhibition has been designed to for the general public let's say because as you see there are tables and models uh, and uh, there are drawings, beautiful drawings on, on the wall around. But uh, every material you can, uh, you can experience is mainly related to the QR code, which are based on, the, on, the, on, the, on each model. And using the QR code, you can enter and see model, video, uh, contents, uh, any, anything else. So would you, would you explain, since the design of the exhibition has been yours, so it's uh, your design inside uh, uh, your building, uh, can you tell us more about the, the concept of the, of the exhibition itself and the way you develop it? Yes, uh, with pleasure. I mean, um, architectural exhibitions are always a bit um, difficult, let's say, particularly for people who are not involved with architecture, not used to uh, looking at drawings and, uh, you know, are not trained in the sort of abstraction of trying to imagine a building that is simulated in other means. Um, uh, because, I mean, and uh, after all, an architectural exhibition is about 
something that is not there. You know, it's, what you're showing is, is, is not the subject of the exhibition. What you're showing is architecture, but that's normally elsewhere. Of course, I mean, M. Nove, showing this, uh, this exhibition in M. Nove is a fantastic opportunity because it's one of the rare occasions where you have the drawings, the texts, the photographs, the everything, plus the actual result. Uh, and you, yeah. can, you can make this connection between um, the, thought pro the thought process, the design process, and, um, and the actual result. Um, <clears throat> but uh, to come back to the general concept of the exhibition, we were I mean, models is something that people like looking at because it's it's very literal. It's uh, just, you know, if they are nice models, they're also kind of just nice objects like sculptures, little, little sort of artworks to look at. Um, and at the same time, they're also the maybe most immediate um, representation of a building that is easily understood in its whole three dimensionality and so on. But um, of course, there's an issue of scale. So um, you you have to, if you see the model, you have to imagine what it's like 500 times bigger or 200 times yeah. bigger, whatever the yeah. scale is of the model. And to help with that, we provide on, the, on an iPad that uh, people can pick up at the, at the front desk. Um, we provide photographs and in some cases also films of the buildings in operation so that you can really get a very simple um, access to what these what these buildings are like and how they're sitting in the city and you know how they're being used and all of these things. So the idea is you have you have a you have a kind of let's say immediate. If you have only ten minutes to spend in this exhibition, you just go around and look at the drawings and the and the foot and the models, and you may like them or not like them. But anyway, it's an immediate and a complete experience. But if you want to know more about the buildings, you want to know why they are shaped the way they're shaped and why they're as tall as they are and so on and so forth, you have to take the iPad and the iPad virtually tells you everything. Um, and you can spend, if you like, you can spend five hours in the exhibition, something like that, if you if you really, if you're maybe a professional and you really want to know all the background. Sure. I, I, and, and, and this is working very well because uh, I, I saw uh, general public moving around and then a group of students of architecture or architects were coming here and they spent really hours uh, using the iPad, using the QR code and, uh, and, and the scale, the jump of scale is very interesting, I, I agree. Uh, this is a very rare case where you have models of M9, you have M9 around you and it's, um, and it's true that uh, usually exhibitions of architecture are kind of difficult or let's say boring sometimes because you have drawings, technical drawing people they, they don't understand it. And the models is the best way, is the only way, is the traditional way since uh, from the beginning to show everybody how the building will be. And, uh, and it's very interesting because those, those models, uh, which are more than 60, has been used and designed, produced by your office along years because it's part of your design process. So, it's Correct. Just, yeah. so yeah. can you tell us more about I mean, uh, the, 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 the design process? I mean, when you are facing a, uh, let's talk about M9, for example. Uh, well, you won a competition, so it, the, the process has been longer uh, because you, you, you pass through the, 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 the first phase, which was the competition itself, and then you enter in the, in the, in the second phase, which was kind of longer in a very complex site. Uh, so how do you face usually uh, as a methodology uh, the, the design process in your office? Um, I mean, the... Uh... M9 is an example of a project that we gained through competition. It was an international design competition, uh, which we were invited to take part in. Um, and, uh, and that's normally a period of, let's say, six to eight weeks or something like that, that we work on something like that quite intensely. There's a team of maybe, well, at the beginning, maybe two or three people, and then towards the end, you can go up to 10 or so depending um, how, how late we are with our decisions. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, um, and basically, in, in, the, in the instance of M. Nove, we had a very uh, well worked out brief. It was very detailed and very clear in terms of its program and all the urban history and everything else. So we didn't have to do that much more uh, research as far as the site is concerned. That was kind of mm -hmm. given to us. Um, and we still spent some time, obviously, just soaking up the atmosphere. And I didn't know Mestre very well, actually, to be honest, at the time. And so it was very interesting to drive around and go to Maguera and see the industrial areas and uh, get to know a little bit um, the, the, the terra firma. 
Uh, and anyway, so I mean, it it was um, then there's a very clear brief for the museum and um, and all of its uh, ancillary functions. And it was most of all an urban, uh, first of all, an urban uh, decision how to place the volume, which is quite substantial and it's quite a bit of uh, volume that um, you know needed to be placed. How do you place it in that urban context? And yeah. in these decisions we make, uh, we quite often. Um, we make alternative models who so kind of make cheap material per cardboard or foam or something like that. We make kind of alternatives and we try and compare and we have a kind of larger model where we can put it in and can sort of see how it works and how it, you know, the heights, how they match and so on and so forth. And, um, and this is where we more or less, I think quite early on decided to install this diagonal connection across the site. I mean, the site had been closed off to, for, to the public because it was a, a, in military use. And, uh, and the convent had more or less been fallen into disrepair. And so uh, the museum offered this a fantastic opportunity to open this kind of area and make it accessible to the public. And it was a simple idea, but in, in the end, that was most of the other decisions. Uh, that we made a diagonal connection um, from Via Prenta Vecchia across to the to the central piazza to the Duomo in, in Mestre, um, and um, and that yeah, kind of yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you're right because it, yeah sorry no go ahead no 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 because I was thinking to the fact that uh, uh, the the M nine project is not just the museum but is a is a, is a truly urban project yes. And, it, uh, and it was, I mean, your choice was the way you won the competition because the, the idea of keeping the building lower than the other surrounding building and to open up everything and to create mainly a long urban realm which was connecting part of the cities which was originally separated. I think it's fundamental as a final result, you know? It is, yes. I mean, it, it's, it's fundamental in terms of the, the geometry of the building, but it's also obviously fundamental in terms of the positioning of the, of the museum, the kind of cultural institution within the city. It's not, it's not like, a, you know, like a monument that's sitting in a, in a square with a kind of central axis and a long vista or anything like that, but it's kind of woven into the, into the kind of relatively dense fabric of, of its yeah. surroundings, which is also in a way maybe expressive of, of its um uh towards Mestre and the um and the community it's placed in well and the, the idea of urbanity come up in in most of your project which is a kind of a, your uh, one of the central basics of your approach because uh, uh it's it's very interesting because uh, you know since i uh, as you know very well i have to to work on the video and the narration of the, each project and, and since i follow your work from two decades at least uh, I know that uh, uh, the, your projects are just not single buildings, which has a very strong, uh, by the way, uh, I iconic character because you are working on colors, you're working on specific geometries, you're working on uh, the formal buildings, uh, the, the building as a form. But at the meantime, the uses of color is not just a, a, a what, what today can be called a branding, but is mainly related to a urban vision. I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 the way you design architecture, the way you, you also use uh, colors applied to buildings is related to a larger uh, urban narration, which brings the building into a, a, a larger panorama, a larger point of view, which to me, it's one of the most challenging things. Yeah, yeah but that's absolutely right. I mean, as you, I mean, as you pointed out repeatedly in these fantastic uh, uh, statements that you recorded for, for the iPad, actually, it's very good for... Uh, the visitors to have your your curator's view on on uh, and all the on all the projects. I'm sure that um, helps a, a great deal as well. But yeah, you're right. I mean the um, the the sort of um, placement of um, the building within what we would describe as a cityscape, really as a kind of like yeah. a built landscape, um, is is one of the key issues, um, one of the key decisions because. Obviously, every building independent of what it contains, whether it's a residential building or an office building or a cultural building or some um, civic institution or whatever, it somehow merely through its kind of uh, power of making space and its presence, it's the atmosphere it exudes and so on. It really affects uh, the urban surroundings, the space that everybody yeah. 
using. And so therefore one has to kind of develop a, a kind of concept in that respect. Yeah, and, and I, I think that, could, that this approach, uh, which is also very strongly part of your uh, office identity, is what gives uh, the project uh, a stronger uh, routing, you know? Uh, the, the, sometimes the point is uh, that contemporary architecture is missing the, the possibility of being rooted in a place, which is one of the, one of the big problems we have today, no? I mean, yeah, absolutely right. I mean, I think you could describe it as a contextual approach, except that we're not necessarily trying to imitate the... No, no, that, no, no, absolutely. It's not yeah. critical, it's what they call critical regionalism, which is not, not, which <laughs> yes, not my point. Like that, yeah, the idea yeah. of rooting a place, uh, rooting a building, which is much more complex for me, because it's uh, to, to root a building and to generate reactions, because uh, sometimes some of your projects here in the exhibition are mainly built in what we call periphery or uh, let's say in, in, in places which has no identity, which has no strong identity. And then uh, apparently uh, they say, well, well, they're using color to generate identity, which is the most superficial part. But then the color is part of a larger view where the urban position in generate a new kind of a domestic monumentality, which gives this project a kind of centrality, which in a way record the rest of the the rest of the area, no? give a kind of new balance, a new connection to all the places, and, and this gives uh, to your project a, a stronger perception than just being nicely colored. I mean, it's uh, yeah. I'm trying to go beyond uh, this, uh, the fact that you are just using colors, because which is not the point to me. It's quite it's quite funny because sometimes people react to the color, say in shock, say, "Oh my God, it's so colorful," you know. <laughs> say, well, I mean, just have a look around you. What do you see? You know. Yeah. And Discover well, yeah, well, Messi is really colorful too. I mean, it's uh, you know, people people take it for granted, and it's sort of somehow bringing out this 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 quality, which we would describe as a sort of sensual quality um, to to the city. I think is is something we we really like doing actually. Um, and Mesto, I think, is a fantastic example because it's being the, the public spaces are being used so well. I mean, the the central piazza, but also the Aperio, the building, the, the zone in front of the the museum, the, in front of the former convent where the canal has been opened up, but also the the courtyards next door and the courtyards in uh, the little piazzetta in front of our museum and so on and so forth. They're being used so well every day, even in winter. I mean, the people are sitting outside, are drinking in the evening they have a glass of wine and so on which is wonderful and so if you are seeing the city spaces as interiors then you know that the wall that you are providing to create this uh, this space somehow is like a, it's like a, it's like the interior of your living room if you like and you really want I agree with you yeah 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 something Not that simple. is yeah, the courtier design that has been covered with this beautiful roof actually there is a small exhibition about the drawings of kids during pandemia and so we have uh, even a workshop with kids uh, in full winter. Okay. Fantastic. People, uh, they, 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 it's fantastic. I will send you images later on. Oh, and, you must... uh, it's fun because there are, you know, there are more than 2,000 drawings done by kids for the oh. region of Veneto during the pandemia. And it's a way to celebrate, let's say, pandemia and the kids. And, uh, and the colors of the drawings of the kids and, the, and your place and the, the idea that the courtyard is a place which is not uh, just an outdoor. It's a kind of indoor-outdoor space. And then... Uh, sure. Yeah. And we have this Sunday, we have workshop with kids drawing uh, inside the courtyard, which was fantastic. And uh, That's great. You must send me some pictures, please. Too. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. But just to tell you that uh, when you generate something which uh, the, the power of space is to allow people to imagine something different. No? So great. if architecture allows uh, a better usage of space, then people can imagine differently. So it's a way also to empower imagination of people, and that, which I think is, can be very powerful. No, talking about sensuality, talking about it, senses. Yeah, it's a it's it's a conundrum. It's it's what, uh, well, I mean, we had uh, up to very recently, we had this kind of installation in the courtyard called Oxymoron, and that was exactly what this was about. It was about the fact that um, buildings, um, you know, always take up space. I mean, if you build something somewhere, the kind of ground will be covered, uh, whatever was there, even if there was nothing, I mean, it will be gone. Uh, you have a building there and uh, and um, you, you're wondering, you know, whether whatever you have provided um, is, is kind of replacing what has gone. Yeah. And 
At the same time, I mean, whenever you build a building, you want to provide amenity, you want to provide, you want to enable some activity to happen. You actually want to add to people's life. You, if you like, you like to live, you would like to liberate people's life. So there's this contradiction of a, a sense of liberation of kind of certain degree of freedom that maybe comes with the building, but also with the atmosphere and the kind of programs and so on. And the fact um, that you're taking something away, which uh, inevitably, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so that that's in a way that's a um, yeah it's a it's a, it's a it's an, a contradiction in terms if you like but it's yeah. um, it's what architecture is about basically yeah right. yeah yeah you're right you're right and also I was thinking that the the use of color I remember the first time I saw one of your building which was the tower in Berlin mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my first real reaction was the fact that the, uh, every good architecture has a kind of a power of being. A, with the atmospheric reaction, no? so uh, building plays with the with the with the weather, with the with the, the color of the sky, uh, with the changes of the light, with the changes. Of, you know, in Berlin you have a strong wind, so you have clouds moving, and then the, the from sky to black and to to, to light, and, uh, and 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 the building with this amazing colorful facade was at the meantime a kind of a a reaction to atmospheric, so it was part of the atmosphere itself, but also in the meantime was a statement about uh, sustainability. At that time it was a kind of a very powerful statement because it was one of the first real high-rise building talking about uh, sustainability without the rhetoric of sustainable and ecological architecture. Yes, that's true. I mean, it, um, you you saw the building right, quite early on, and it was completed in 1999, so like yeah. 10 years after reunification. So, and it's very just around the corner from Checkpoint Charlie. And um, as you know, in, in the kind of Cold War times, Checkpoint Charlie was yeah. always a mysterious location where you expected some sort of spy to appear from the fog or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, like but, in a spy movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. After the reunification, I mean, that it was just like a very neglected part of town and it was very gray and there was not very much activity yet. Um, and yeah. to replace this very large, almost like a kinetic painting, this kind of this color into the city totally changed the mood. I mean, we did, we underestimated the power it would have actually. It's, it's, it's really um, quite something. And I guess the the message of sustainability yes i mean the kinetic nature of the of the facade really was um suggesting both the kind of depth of the facade and that it's operative and it's doing something but he was also showing that there were many many people inside who are each obviously having you know operating this kind of device um it's it was right from the beginning never an idea of sustainability just as a technological thing like you know photovoltaic panels on the roof yeah. or like yeah. that it's always to do with people and with with the use of buildings and also the kind of the kind of atmospheric dimension, the sort of aesthetic dimension, whatever you perceive of of a building. Um, and we think that that's a very important part of sustainability. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, when tell me about the checkpoint, Charlie. You're right because I remember uh, Berlin that time. It was a kind of a gray zone because between, it was between east and west. It was a kind of your building is it was it was on the border somehow on, on the on the on the on the line between the almost two. yeah it's... Uh, almost there and uh, so it was between a gray a gray area and a completely different one and putting such a colorful building which was uh, at that time i remember was very different from everything i saw i remember yes, yes. <laughs> uh, and it was a uh, it was amazing and it was uh, by the way it was really one of the st one of the first real uh, important building you designed at that time right? because uh, uh, your your office has been known through this one and then the photo the photo the photo the photo yeah. uh, it, it was it, it was a um uh, it was a, uh, for a young office it was really a stroke of luck i have to say it, it was the sort of first um where we started our office in uh, in 80 at the, at the changeover from 88 to 89 yeah. uh, it, yeah. Two years, <laughs> and uh, uh, and we only had just started to do small scale work, and then we entered competitions, and it's, it was, I think, the second or so most substantial co uh, competition that we entered, um, and it took. I mean, it was uh, like a slightly prolonged process. It took about half a year, so we also oh, wow. several okay. stages. 
Um, but in the end, we won it, which was like, uh, you know, it's going from zero to a bingo. One. It was a bingo for the office. <laughs> <laughs> the office was about three people. You know? Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so we really, it's a, it was a steep learning curve. Um, it was a challenge. It was a real challenge. Yeah, but also part, partially due to political, um, uh, say, complications, it took about nine years. Uh, for oh, wow. It. So long. Ah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. worse than M9. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, nine, nine also nine years. It's easy to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, the number nine remember. is your number. Number nine is your number. <laughs> yeah, well, but, good projects take a long time. That's, well, uh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. As a good friendship, I agree with you. But, uh, well, you know, it can be also suffering and painful. But, uh, I mean, talking about the tower, the, the, the building in Berlin, and then in 20... And then you designed the, the, the beautiful uh, Ministry of Ecology in the South. And, I mean, uh, and uh, in a way... Sustainability, it's always been part of your way of thinking, no? not just a statement, but was a way of thinking, which is, which is fundamental. So how, did you, I, how have you seen the idea of sustainable changing in the last 20 years? Because it changed a lot. Yes, it did change a lot. As a matter of fact, uh, when we started GSW, it was really, I mean, it was a kind of strange instinct because after the wall had come down, um, Berlin was taken, I mean, the, the, the Berliners and the city is, is, is more prone to a certain degree of pessimism. It's like in all large cities, people are sort of grumpy and sure, sure. Not, not easily uh, uh, hospitable. But after the, after the reunification, the mood was so optimistic. I mean, everybody felt like, you know, this is going to be the beginning. This is the first day, tomorrow's the first day of the future sort of thing. Yeah. And, so we, everybody, um, we as well felt like if, if we're building this big building here, I mean, somehow this will have to be a contribution to the future. I mean, somehow it has to be something done, something that's mon mo momentous, you know, that's kind of yeah. some yeah, yeah, yeah. moment. And um, and that's when we, and we made a bit of research. We had no idea about office buildings and so on. So we had made some research and we found that what at the time was called low energy architecture was really something that was taking, uh, starting to take ground. And uh, we researched it quite thoroughly and we teamed up with Overop, the uh, engineers in London. We were in London at the time, no? We had our okay. um, and uh, we researched and we could looked at a few precedents. There were very few actually at the time all over the world. And, um, and then so we really developed something which was quite, quite, um, quite new, if you like. And it was entirely based on the idea that um, the energy, um, uh, fossil energy in this instance, um, that, is, that is needed to maintain the building's life cycle is mostly um, being uh, consumed in, its, in the operation of the building and not necessarily in the construction. Ah, okay, okay. At the time we, were, we had a kind of diagram, we were saying about 15% goes into the construction and 85% goes into the operation. And so oh, wow. we, were, we were trying to cut down on operation. We were trying to get lighting on cooling, on ventilation, on uh, elevators, and so on and so forth. And, um, and that has changed entirely now today because the regulations have become that much stricter. Okay. It, uh, the part that uh, is the, co the construction is about 50% rather than 15 wow. Wow. And, and so therefore, we're much more aware of what we call gray energy of the kind of energetic investment that goes into the big, into a project at the beginning of its life cycle. In other words, the materials you use and so on and so forth. So um, the thinking has changed and it is partially, and it's really also something that has happened through projects because we kind of go from project to project and in every project there's a new, something else we're trying out, we're trying to push the sort of limits and, uh, and it's one project which uh, actually you're standing you're probably looking at it uh, when you look behind the camera you're looking into it <laughs> there's a it's this it's the it's the munich which one? Uh, the, the so-called b95 the munich project it's okay. uh, uh, no no it's not behind you it's in front of you i think uh, uh, are you in, the, it, well, in front of me no there's a, no, in front of me there's the, the 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 museum yeah on the right on your right in the corner on your right on my right, on the corner. Ah, no, that's, that's one. That's left. <laughs> Is it this one? No. The other direction. Go on. This way. 
go on further 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 i uh, no, no no sorry no no it's not here it's not here <laughs> okay i'm i'm losing orientation as well now <laughs> because i'm <laughs> anyway I'm very, the, uh, I'm very close to the munich uh, art gallery it's a uh, it's very close to the munich art gallery it's on the right of the munich art gallery it's a big large black model that's sitting relatively high on a pedestal ah yes that, that one that one uh the one with mirroring no okay no 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 so it it doesn't really matter okay no problem, no problem. it has kind of it has these vertical colored stripes and it's okay. uh, and it's a conversion of an existing building it's a okay. It ah, okay i understand it okay okay a 1980s building which yeah, we converted yeah, yeah. into an, an office building okay 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 and uh and that's th that's when we did that and we then in almost after the event we kind of calculated the the energy consumed and energy saved and so on we discovered what that there's fantastic potential in the reuse of existing buildings and which is one of the one of one of the key <laughs> argument today is not just building new which is not the yeah. case but is uh, yeah. working on existing building of the 80s and 70s which are we, more energy consuming than others we had in, instinctively done it already with the GSW project because as you know yeah. there's an old tower that we're integrating into but sure. uh, but with this uh, Munich project that was the first time where we really became fully aware of, of the possibilities and so since then we've been working a lot um, with um, existing buildings trying to harvest as much as we can both material but also kind of gray energy that is in existence well and, uh, and uh, moving from this point of view uh, and talking about the use because in, in, I saw a last I said to a recent project we've been working using wood uh, and timber timber construction which yes. is one of the probably one of the of the material which allows this kind of a reflection about the sustainability of the building, no? And the process. Exactly. exactly. I mean, if you are if you if you if you are building something new, then obviously you should kind of try and use as much as you can uh, materials that are um, carbon neutral or car low carbon. Yeah. Is, and um, timber is the, is unbeatable in that respect because obviously it's absorbing. Uh, it's absorbing carbon dioxide as in growth, and uh, and then the carbon dioxide is sequestered in in the material in the building, almost like in a forest. Okay. Because once the building is being demolished, and if the timber then is being uh, burned, I guess this carbon dioxide comes back into the atmosphere. Sure. But assuming that a building lasts for fifty, twenty, uh, sorry, fifty, sixty, eighty years or something like that, that is. It causes or creates a certain delay, which which is actually very helpful at the moment. Yeah. I saw some of the project, like a one in Hamburg, which is a kind of student house, which is a kind of a yes. very interesting experimental building. Because in Hamburg, they are investing also in research on the use of timber for large building. No? Yes, exactly. I mean, that's a that's a modular building, which on top of that's a different discussion still, because it's a it's almost entirely prefabricated. Okay. Uh, Picking up from a from a discourse of the 1970s, really, I mean that in in the eastern Eastern Europe led to all these kind of prefabricated concrete buildings, and some some of them in the West as well. Um, but uh, but we are kind of rearriving at the same argument at a, on a different level, if you like, because now today we have all this computer controlled um, equipment. Um, okay other tools we have much we have robotic production and so on and so forth so it's a it's a really powerful and interesting um uh, sort of area to research and to work with and we did one project and it's just the second one that's un it's not in the exhibition that is just about to open actually in berlin oh, wow wow so what, what do you consider uh, i mean it's very interesting because in the last conversation we did with other designer like you we discuss about the challenges of the use of timber, which apparently is a very traditional material, but then a lot of contemporary actors say that uh, this uh, traditional material has a lot of uh, potentials that has to be still uh, uh, experienced, still uh, uh, understood. Yeah, the big difference between traditional timber architecture is that <coughs> we now are using, we're, we're using engineered timber. We're not using uh, trees, if you like, um, because sure. traditional architecture, obviously everything was reduced to the scale of the tree. I mean, you can, yeah. the, uh, the dimension of the, of the beams were uh, ruling the spans and so on and so forth. So there's a certain scale and a certain degree of repetition and so on and so forth. That's a natural result of the material 
But now, because we're engineering timber, we're gluing it to, to kind of slabs and any dimension, any kind of shape, it's really unbelievable. It it's sure. become an element, almost in a material uh, like concrete, except it's lighter, uh, it's usually larger in section, and uh, obviously you have to kind of um, be able to deal with the weathering. I mean, if you use it on the exterior, you either have to want it to, to weather, make this part of your aesthetic, or you are somehow have to protect it. Um, and so there's a, there's a whole new language appearing at the moment, a whole new wow. Fantastic. Uh, dialogue, if you like, on, on this particular material, because obviously a lot of architects are using it. It's very exciting. And it's just, the, just the last question, uh, which are the, 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 the interesting projects on your table you are carrying on, I mean, which, are, which are not in exhibition, so something that I see, <laughs> also I don't know. Oh, they, they, they that, you can tell us, that you can tell us clearly. Um, well, the, 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 let's say the most challenging one is we recently won a, comp a, a large competition for a, a, a fairground in Thessaloniki, in ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which uh, the, the most unusual aspect of that is that it's in the middle of the city. I mean, normally, uh, you know, fairs are outside at the airport somewhere at the edge of the horizon. Uh, this one is right in the middle of the city and it, it doubles up as a kind of public space. So it's a, it has a big, okay. and, uh, and when there's no exhibition, then it, it's a kind of becomes a cultural location for, for the city. And that's, that's an extremely interest, interesting proposition. We're just starting to work on that now. Fantastic. I'm looking uh, forward to, to see it soon. It, <laughs> we, take, we take some here, I'm sure. We really take some great. Here. Yeah, it's really fantastic. And, but we're also working on a number of things on, on the kind of um, uh, field that I just mentioned. We have a very large office building from the 1980s in Hamburg that we are extending and converting without uh, demolishing or we're demolishing only parts of it. Um, we're reusing it. And there's also another project uh, which is based on the modular timber um, logic is starting now so i mean there's there's quite a lot of things going on it's all i mean it's at the moment very uh, dramatic because things seem to be changing um a lot and uh, and and you know it's it's very exciting in a way fantastic so matthias thank you so so much and i will, I, I will come all of you to to be part of the exhibition and, yes uh, and i see you next year so for for for, for the moment uh, uh, Merry Christmas to all of you and Happy New Year. The same to you and I'm, I'm very much looking forward. We will yeah, be... we'll meet next year to close up the exhibition together. Yeah. Okay. Yes, we'll probably be there before. So anyway. Super, super. Ciao. Yeah. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Ciao. 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 Ciao.